We're going to start today by making Earth hotter than the sun. We're going to see if it's possible to make Earth hotter than the sun and what that will do to Earth and I guess the sun. We're also going to be doing a bunch of other things that you guys suggested. So once again, just type down in the comments below your suggestion for Universe Sandbox and the best ones will get picked. So here is Earth. This is what we're starting with today uh, to make it hotter than the sun. Let's see how hot the sun is to start. So let's take a look at the sun. So it is 5,752 K, which is Kelvin. So let's just try turning Earth hotter than that. So we'll go 6,000 Kelvin for its temperature. 6,000 K. Okay, so it already looks like the sun. Let's play time. We're gonna set it to real time. So every second that happens in the game is the same as one second in real life. So we're gonna speed up time and see if it recovers fully or what's gonna happen. The average temperature on Earth was hotter than the sun at the very instant that I unpaused it. So let's see how that affects the surface. It honestly doesn't look too different, except that all of the plant life is definitely dead and the ice caps are gone. You can see there's no North Pole or Antarctica anymore. Our next suggestion says, try to put Earth as far as possible where it can still orbit the sun and then supernova the sun. Okay, so basically we're gonna put a second Earth. We'll leave this one here to see what happens to this Earth, but we're gonna add a sun as far as possible, but it still orbits. We'll go one light year away. Now we're going to supernova the sun and see what happens to, I guess, the solar system and to our Earth that's really far away. So we're going to do a uh, supernova in real time. So this is real time in the simulation. We're going to go tools and then explode and we should just click on the sun. Okay, so you can see the supernova started. So we're gonna have to speed it up because the sun is so far away that even if it did just randomly supernova, we wouldn't even know for eight minutes because the sun is eight light minutes away. So we're gonna speed up time now and it hit Mercury. Ooh, a lot of the heating hasn't really hit it yet. Earth seems okay for now. Um, but after, oh, there we go. Okay, it really hit it now after a couple minutes. Half of the earth is completely melted and the other half, I guess is still there, but yeah, it's it's destroyed. The earth is gone. Venus is still here for some reason. I think, yeah, okay, Venus just left. Jupiter is getting burned, but usually Jupiter survives a supernova, at least the ones I've done in the past. Okay, a lot of small asteroids and stuff get burned up too. Our earth out here though is really cold, which I mean, you would expect that, but let's see if the supernova ever hits it. It looks like it will. Supernovas are very, very big. Let's see if it burns it up or what happens to it. Here comes the supernova. Okay, it might be that it's so cold once it gets out here, it's cooled down enough that it doesn't have really any effect. Yeah, almost zero effect. And there, I guess the supernova is over. So a super far one light year away Earth would be safe from a supernova. All right, the next suggestion says delete the sun for one month in game and then place it back without redoing all the planet's orbits and see what happens. So we are going to delete the sun for one game or for one month in game. So let's set our sim speed to one day per second and then we'll just wait like 30 seconds. The solar system is the new system completely fine. We're just going to delete it. So there's no sun now. And once I unpause time, we're gonna have to wait 30 seconds. And then, so on November 15th, we will pause the game and add the sun back. So look, a lot of the planets are getting thrown out of their orbits. So the slower moving planets, I think are gonna do better because the ones that move faster, like Mercury, you can see it's already like beyond the point of no return. It's gonna be very hard to try to recapture that. Okay, we got a couple more seconds left. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so pause time there. We are re-adding back the sun. Uh, I hope I get it in the right spot, like right here. Probably, yeah, probably the center of the simulation. Okay, add it back right there. And then let's play time and we'll speed it up to kind of see what happens here. But some of these I think are not coming back. Earth, it seems like it's getting pulled again. Mercury's definitely gone. Mercury's never coming back. I think that most of these outer planets will be fine because they move so slow, but it looks like a lot of these are just going to be put into a very elliptical orbit. So that is what happens if you delete the sun for a month. All right, next is make the earth five times bigger and throw a moon into it and see if it can survive. So a regular moon collision on earth is very, very devastating, pretty much destroys all life. So if we make the earth five times bigger first, will the moon impact not be as big? Let's find out. So 
We're just going to turn up the radius and not lock the mass. So the mass will grow too, but basically we're focusing on making it five times bigger in size, not in mass. There, okay, radius is five times earth. So we might need to turn down the water level to try to reveal our continents. What well, looks like a normal water level right there. And then, I mean, it's obviously not used to this. We can make the atmosphere five times earth too to try to bring back a little bit more. Bring it back about right there. Looks pretty natural. I don't know why these giant ice caps form, but there is a uh, there is Earth that is now five times bigger. So we're gonna throw a regular sized moon at it and see what happens. Okay, there's the moon. Okay, the moon does look like a lot smaller compared to how it usually looks. It looks like it's gonna hit right in the Gulf of Mexico, which is where there's already the Chicxulub crater, I believe. Okay, we'll do like a slow motion collision here. There it goes. So obviously this is still going to be very bad. Uh, it's causing massive tsunamis. You can see the water spreading. These are tsunamis that are now covering all of the US and Mexico and Central America, heading even into South America from that, which is crazy. And then I guess you get flooded and then immediately get burned by the shockwave that travels across. So it looks like is the shockwave still going to travel across the whole planet? No, it's like perfectly half. So if you're all the way on the opposite side, you might be OK. But then you have these fragments raining down from space, causing massive, massive explosions bigger than any bomb we've ever set off. Like you saw that shockwave there. Almost no one is going to be safe from this collision. That is crazy. OK, so it might have destroyed nearly all of humanity, but after years and years and years, does the Earth ever recover? It looks like we only have small land masses left. It like added water somehow. You have this little island and that is about it. Whoa. There's this too and that. That is it. That's all the land. Crazy. All right, our next suggestion says make Stevenson 218 the smallest star and then collide it with the sun. Okay, so if you don't know, Stevenson 218 is the biggest star that has ever been discovered. So we're going to grab it here. You can see the size compared to the solar system. It is absolutely massive. So while it's paused, I'm going to set it out here. And to make this the smallest star, how big is the smallest star? It's like about the size of Saturn. We need it to stay a star, though. That should make it a star. OK, so it's a star there. Lock it and then we'll turn this radius down. So it's just really dense. So we need it like half of Jupiter, I guess. OK, so now this is a really small star. It was Stevenson 218. So I'll show you. This is Saturn compared to our new star. That is how small it is, which is I mean, it's still massive, like compare that to the Earth. But that used to be Stevenson 218. So let's save this as small Stevenson 218. And we're going to throw that into the sun. OK, here's the sun. Let's find our object. OK, launch into the sun. Let's see what happens here. A tiny star going into the sun. OK, here it goes. It's on its way. You can see all the different solar flares stuff. Here it goes colliding. Oh, OK, it collided and a lot of fragments came out. It turned the sun blue, so it heated up the sun. But I think the sun will just cool down. Oh, no, it looks like the sun's shooting out matter. This might have disrupted the sun more than I thought it would. Oh, it launched the sun out of the solar system. It must have been going way fast. That is completely going to destroy the system. Earth over here is now without a star. Whoa, wait, what happened to Earth? It like got what? It like got hit with like a solar flare and it completely destroyed it. But somehow the vegetation is still here. What? How is the vegetation still intact? That is crazy. What do the other planets look like? What does Mars look like? They all got like shot by something and it like killed them. What happened? It like got super hot and almost burned, like charred all of the planets. And then now it's heading out and it's going so fast. It's not going to be able to bring anything with it. So it completely destroyed the solar system. I did not think that was going to happen. That was crazy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Once again, if you have suggestions for Universe Sandbox here, put them down in the comments below, or you can join my Discord server, discord.gg spaceship. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.